Hi there, the Greg Arnold Rendering Specialist at Autodesk. I just want to go through how to render this glass bowl scene using Arnold. There is this written tutorial with the scene files for all the plugins. I'll put links in the description. Okay, so we've got our fishbowl scene here uh, with the glass surface, some water and some bubbles. If we go into the side view here, you notice the glass has been modelled with some thickness and the liquid inside has been increased so that it overlaps the glass bowl geometry. This is important when accurately rendering refractive surfaces with Arnold. The normals for the glass, water and bubbles are all, are all pointing outwards as well, which is important when rendering with the standard surface shader in Arnold. Okay, so let's start shading the glass first. I'm going to assign a standard surface material to the glass bowl. Call that glass. Now there are some glass presets here that we could use, but I'm going to start from scratch. So just start off an Arnold render. And I'm going to reduce the roughness to zero because we want nice clear glass. The IRR is set to glass by default, which is good. You can see that there. And then just increase the transmission weight to one. So that's the glass. Then there's the water inside that we want to assign another standard surface shader. Call that water. And again, reduce the roughness to zero, but this time we want to change the IR to that of water, 1.33. Increase the transmission weight to one. And then again for the bubbles, another standard surface, roughness zero. And we need to change the IOR to that of air, which is one. Transmission weight one. Now for the bubbles to render correctly, we need to use dielectric priority. So this is direct dielectrics are enabled by default in the render settings. All we need to do is change the direct priority of the glass, the water and the bubbles. If you're not sure which values to use, you can go to the Nestic Dielectrics page. I'll put a link in the description. And um, we've got several examples. Uh, for example, this whiskey glass here, the glass has been set to three, the bubbles two and the liquid is one. Okay, so let's do that in with Arnold. So glass is set to three, water, liquid set to one, and the bubbles are set to two. So now you should notice that the bubbles are rendering correctly. Okay, so here we've got the default render settings. And I'm gonna create a snapshot of that and go to the render settings and under ray depth. I'm going to increase the specular ray depth to three. You should notice it's a bit lighter at the top of here. Do, do a comparison before and after. Transmission ray depth of eight should be sufficient in this scene, but I'm going to just reduce it just to show the difference. So something like two. With a low transmission ray depth of two, there aren't enough ray bounces to get through the, the glass, the water and the bubbles. Increase it more to something like four. We can see through the glass and the water, but we don't have enough transmission rays for the bubbles. Um, increasing it to something like six should be sufficient. And then lastly, we could try enabling caustics for the glass and the water. So under the advanced tab of the standard surface shader, we can enable caustic, caustics there. And the same for the water shader. You should notice that the glass in the water is now brighter. It's because the illumination inside the glass is essentially all caustics. However, you can see that we've introduced some noise on the table from the caustics. This can be resolved by increasing the number of camera A samples or diffuse samples if you're using CPU. Alternatively, you can also resolve the noise by increasing the amount of indirect specular blur in the advanced section here. So that's an introduction to rendering glass and liquid surfaces in Arnold. Thanks for watching. Bye.